So this has been my number one asked for request when it comes to foundation paper piecing is how to design a quilt block, specifically how to design it in EQ8. So I use EQ8 for my pattern designing and I have for quite a while now. I've learned a lot. I am self-taught because I'm just stubborn like that. But it's actually pretty user friendly and I'm gonna walk you through some basic steps to get you started. And we'll do this over the next few weeks as part of the foundation paper piecing tutorials. So this is Electronic Quilt 8. If you do not have it, uh, you do have to pay to get it. It's not a free program, but it is a very useful program. Um, I do have an affiliate link that I will put in the comments. So if you do wanna purchase it and you wanna use my link, I will get a little bit of a commission from that but obviously you're not obligated to purchase through my link or purchase at all. Um, there are some free programs out there. I haven't personally used them, but for me, the, the EQ8 does what I need it to, and I like the way it works, so I've never had to explore another option. So let's just start, and I'll show you some basic steps, and then we'll build on those steps over the next couple weeks. So you're going to open up Electric Quilt, and We'll just work on a basic block, just something really simple. I'll show you which buttons are useful and which ones really you don't even have to worry about right now. This is what comes up when you open EQ8. You can design a quilt, you can draw a block, or you can work with fabrics. Today we're just going to draw a block. So we'll design a block from scratch. And right now it's untitled. You can also open a current project or you can get a brand new project. So let's do that again. Up here in this upper left is new project, and I'm going to name it just so that we can keep it separate from any other project. So let's just name it Bob. <laughs> so this is our block. So now we can choose what kind of block we wanna make. So we have the option of pieced, applique, a combination of both or serendipity. So for the most part, I use piece because I'm foundation paper piecing. I do use applique every once in a while. If I need to make a motif that's rounded or like a, um, a star or a flower, something that's not going to be foundation paper pieced, I will use applique, but for now we're gonna use pieced. And then I pretty much always use easy draw. These are other options that we can explore later, but for this morning, we're just going to choose easy draw. So this is our main home page. This is pretty much where you're going to stay while you're designing your block. So you have your drawing tools and your tracing image. If you want to pull in an image to copy or to draw over, you can do that. We're not gonna worry about that today. So for drawing tools, we have pick, edit, line, arc, and grid. And these top three are pretty much where you're gonna stick with most of the time. You don't have to worry about the others if you're just doing foundation paper piecing. So let's go ahead and pick our block size and get it set up. Now I'm going to just do a 12 inch block. So 12 by 12. And then the rule of thumb is this is your snaps. So these little dots on your grid are your snaps. And that helps keep things nice and straight when you're drawing your lines initially. The rule of thumb is you want four times as many snaps as the measurement of your block. So for us, we have a 12 inch block, so we'll use a 40 in, 48 snaps. And this is just, like I said, it's a rule of thumb. It's not a hard and fast rule, but it works well. It's just a nice even number. It essentially means in between each snap, you're going to have two additional snap points. So it'll make sense in a bit if it doesn't. So we're gonna start out by drawing some lines. Now when you're doing foundation paper piecing, it's like carving a statue. You wanna start with the largest pieces and kinda of get those cut off to begin with and then you can start defining your statue as you go in. So let's just say we're going to do a simple little block or circle in the middle. Like let's say we want just a simple little octagon or hexagon in the middle here. So we're going to carve some of those larger pieces off first. So up here, um, I don't usually worry about graph paper cells. That never makes a difference to me. These snapping options are going to make a difference. So you've got three options here. The first one is snap to grid points on your work table. So the grid points are these little dots. We've got snap to nodes of drawing. So once you get a couple lines drawn 
and at an intersection, they'll make a node or this little endpoint is a node. So if you want it to snap to the nodes that are created, that's that, or snap to lines and arcs of drawing. So it'll snap to a line. So for our main carving, our first little initial carving, we're going to choose snap to grid points on work table. We're not going to turn these two on yet. We're just going to have the grid points turned on for now. And then I've selected line. And like I said, we're going to start carving off some main sections. So I'm going to select over here at the left hand side and run my line all the way to the right hand side. Now watch what happens. My line is not completely horizontal. It's a little off, but because I have that snap to grid points turned on, it's going to do the work for me. So I've pulled my line all the way across here. And if I miss that point just by a little bit, it'll snap to that point. So it helps you get nice straight lines if that's what you want initially. I'm going to do, and see, I'll make sure I'm keeping it even. One, two, three, four, five, six. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'll show you again here. If I'm a little bit off from my grid point, it'll snap to the grid point. And then I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. So we're just going to keep carving in. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we've got a nice little square in the center. So pick, you can pick a line. So in this case, I'm going to pick and then click delete on my keyboard. Edit is where you can edit a line. So you select the line and then lengthen it or shorten it or move it all around. Pick picks the line, but you don't edit it you just pick it up as it is and move it around. I'm going to delete that. I'm actually going to turn back on the snap to grid points because I do want to cut off these diagonal sections and I really do want to, it to be right on the grid points. If I was doing something um, like if I'm tracing an image, let's just pull an image in here to trace and I'll show you actually. There we go. There we go. So I've got that pulled into trace. And so let's say I really want to trace this image. So in this case, I might not want to snap to the grid points because I need it to be more precise than that. So, you know, if I'm over here drawing my lines, the grid points might not be where I want it to snap to. So I can turn off the grid points and just snap to nodes and snap to lines and that gets me a more accurate drawing than if I was actually snapping to the the grid points. The grid points are going to be you know just kind of right where they are. I can't veer too much off of it because if I veer off of a grid point it's going to snap back to the closest grid point and sometimes I don't want that. So I'm going to Let's just go ahead and get rid of this tracing image. So I'm going to draw my diagonal lines and kind of cut some corners off of this square and make him an octagon. Whoops, that's the wrong place. And then I'm going to switch to pick and get rid of the extra lines that I was just using to demonstrate. Okay, and here's a good example. I've drawn him crooked, so I will select edit and just select the line and then move this node up to where it needs to be. Now, I've actually had the wrong two things turned on. I actually wanted the grid point turned on because I wanted it to snap to the grid point. These are your zoom in and out, and if you select the plus sign for zoom in, you can really come in here and select the area to zoom in on and get it really close. Ah, here's a really good example. So I did not have the snap to grid points turned on and you see how it's just off. This is the grid point right here, it's just off. And it might not be a big deal, but in this case, I did actually want them all to snap to the grid points because I wanted them all to be exactly even. So I'm going to move that with the edit key. That's actually why sometimes 
grid points are a good thing because it keeps everything nice and even. If I was using an asymmetrical picture and I didn't care, you know, that it wasn't symmetrical, I wouldn't have the grid points turned on. But in this case, I did want them to be symmetrical. So you can also, um, if you're working on something and maybe you just wanted to sketch it out first and see how the lines are going to look and how it's going to work, you can now right click with your mouse and convert to guides. So all of these lines will become little dotted lines. Whoops, I just had that line selected. Let's try that again, convert to guides. So now all of the lines that I just drew have become guidelines. And so essentially this is just a nice way if you get to a certain point and you like the way it works, but maybe you did have the wrong selection turned on and you wanna redo it, turn it to guidelines. You don't have to lose your progress, you can see what lines you've already made and now you can trace over them. So in this case, I forgot to turn my snap to grid points on. So I'll make sure it's turned on and now I can go over these lines and it will actually snap to the grid points. So I'm going to go over these lines real quick and then we'll work on some coloring. And because snap to grid points are turned on, these will all snap to the nearest grid point and keep it all symmetrical. So that's what we want right there. So let's go color. So I'm going to choose the color tab and then you can just fill in. So we have a paintbrush, a spray can, a select and spray, an eyedropper, fussy cut, or open the library for more fabrics. I rarely use a fussy cut or select and spray. I'm really paintbrush or spray can. So paintbrush does individual blocks. The spray can will spray everything of the same color. So if I want to change everything of, that's the same color in that block, I'll select spray can, select a new color, and then just spray one of those blocks and everything that's the same color will change. Or we can go back to paintbrush, or we can go back to spray can. I want everything to be that color. With spray pan, you can spray can you can change everything of that color at once. So if you're, you know, maybe figuring out background colors, you can change all of those sections at the same time and not have to individually click. So then, when we've got a block we're happy with, we'll go to print and export. So EQ8 defaults to sending it to your printer to print. So if you've got a block that you actually want to turn into a PDF, you will need to set your computer default printer to a PDF printer. So I'm not going to explain that because it'll be different on different systems, but you'll need to figure out how to set your, your default computer printer to a PDF printer instead of to like an actual printer. So in my case, I have it set to, it'll send it to a PDF printer. So when I come in here, I can choose to print the block, which will just print like a picture of the block, which is nice so that you can see the rendering and the rendition and what it's going to look like. You can print the templates if you're going to do like an EPP or if you just want to cut out your fabric. You can do foundation paper piecing, which is usually what I click. You can do rotary cutting, which will show you how to cut these out. It'll show you the measurements. So if you wanted to cut these out as just rotary cutting and then traditional piecing, you can do that as well. That works best for something like this block that we have here where they're real symmetrical. Where there's not a lot of crazy angles. When you get into crazy angles, it doesn't work as well for rotary cutting. But for now, we're going to choose foundation and then it'll show us what it comes up with for the piecing. So let me actually make this bigger. Okay, so here's our block and our block is one section. I do love that when that is possible. So in this case, the computer has numbered it for us, but it has decided that A1 is this little triangle and A2 is the middle hexagon. And I don't think I like that. I would like to start with the large one. So I'm going to choose change numbers and then you just now start going in the order you want. So I will click in the middle and now A1 is the middle and it has automatically changed for me. A2, A3, A4. I'm gonna go ahead actually and keep this one, let's see, one, two, three, four. I want this one to be number five. Now I'm okay with the larger ones coming last. So we'll click finish and it'll auto fill the rest of the numbers. The sections don't matter because they're all one section. And we'll come to options. 
So our block is 12 by 12. We can change it to a different size if we want, or we can use the size from the work table where we just were. We can choose our seam allowance. I do want a seam allowance. Uh, you can choose solid or dotted. If you leave this unchecked, it'll be a dotted seam allowance line. And you can choose how you want it to print. So I like the color fill so that you can see clearly what you're working on, what, what fabric you need to pull for that pattern piece. And then this is important when we're doing foundation paper piecing. So we want it to print our numbering. We want it to separate the units. Uh, in this case, we just have the one block. But if you had several sections within one pattern, yeah, you want it separated so you can actually piece it. We want it to mirror because remember with foundation paper piecing, the paper is the back of our quilt. So we want it mirrored. So in case we're making something that isn't symmetrical, we need it to turn out correct on the front of the quilt. So we want it mirrored. Print block name, I don't want that because that's just at the bottom of the page and I usually edit that out anyways. So I am going to preview and here's what we have now. It, it prints across four pages because it's a 12 inch block and then we would just paste this together and it's showing us our colors and we just have the one block because it's one section. So you can move this around if you want um, we can also make it a smaller block, so we'll go back to options. Let's just make it a smaller block so it actually fits on that page. And everything else stays the same, we'll preview again. And we can just make it fit on that page. Or we can make it even smaller. Let's do a seven inch block. There we go. <laughs> now it's on one page, nice and tidy. And when I click print, it'll save it to a PDF. And that's all there is to it. So practice with some basic lines and basic shapes. Work on making yourself an octagon. I think this is actually a crooked side and it's kind of driving me crazy. No, maybe not. One of these is, it's this one that's wrong. So I'm gonna edit this one. <laughs> just driving me crazy so practice making yourself an octagon uh, for the most part I don't venture too far from what I showed you on these pages even when I'm making a complicated pattern these are really the buttons and the settings I use no matter the pattern I'm making so even if I'm doing something like a custom dog quilt this is pretty much my bread and butter now Yes, it gets a little more complicated. I have to take more steps to design the pattern or I have to take more steps to make sure that as I'm working, it stays true as a foundation paper piece pattern. You know, sometimes I'll draw a line and then the, the EQ8 will freak out because that's not an actual line that will work in foundation paper piecing. So sometimes there's some trial and error, but we'll get into that later. But for the most part, this is pretty much where I stay. The... Um, easy draw block and you can choose your block size you can get as large as you want really I think it can go up to 60 inches uh, easily work on remembering to choose your snap options because a lot of times we forget to do that I forget to do that so work on that and then we'll talk later next time we're gonna work on another block we'll get a little more complicated and then I'll show you how we turn that block into a quilt design